Hey guys, James here today and welcome back to part two of The Sims 4 semi-detached house build. Finally, I, I, it definitely, it definitely took uh, me a while to get this out, but it's finally here. So we're finishing up the build because uh, a lot of you guys were asking, where's part two? When's it coming out? When can I download this? Well, you can download it right now on The Sims 4 Gallery. The link is in the description down below if you want to go download it whilst you're watching. Uh, you can do that or you can find it on my gallery, which is just the uh, same username as my name here on YouTube, which is The Sim Supply, all one word. You can go find it out there. So the other house build was like a kind of, or well, the other, you know, the other house in this semi-detached build was a kind of traditional but fancy upper middle class furnished build. This side, I've decided to go for a contemporary renovation on the lower floor. Uh, and we'll talk about the upper floor when we get there, but we've, we've done, like, this is, for me, this was really inspired by, uh, I used to watch a lot of Property Ladder when I was back on, and then when they were making it back in the day, like, you know, the sort of mid-2000s, that sort of time. I used to watch a lot of it. It was obviously because I was in the UK, they always had, you know, these semi-detached houses on it, all that kind of stuff. And they'd, they'd do these like uh, really contemporary makeovers of the lower floor. And then they'll have like, maybe they'd build like a little shed out the back and turn it into a home office. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've decided to build like a little a little uh, shed out the back as a home office. It's basically just a room to have a computer, like a sofa and, a, a, and some books and that in it. Like that was the idea behind it. I thought that was really cool. So I had a bit of fun with that. And uh, I, I did end up using pretty much the same floor plan as the other house as these homes typically have you know, the mirror image floor plan, as a lot of you guys also said in the comments. And I'm re actually really happy that um, so many of you guys from the UK were like, oh my God, this is exactly like my house. Or like, oh my God, this is, like, I'm really happy because to be honest, I was just basing this off of, because uh, I've, I've been to the UK a lot. Uh, my sister used to live in, the, in, in London and I have all my cousins, uh, grandparents, all, all live in the UK. So I go over there a lot. Uh, in fact, I'm actually going there this weekend for Frontier Expo. Thanks Frontier for sending me over. Anyway, by the time this video goes out, it will, oh no, by the time this video goes out, it will be, I'll be leaving today. Yeah. I'll be leaving in like 12 hours, 12, 14 hours from the time this video releases to fly to London. So that's cool. If you go to Frontier Expo, I'll see you there. Uh, if not, then don't worry. And if this is in the future and you're watching it later down the line, don't worry about it either. But anyway, I go there a lot. The whole point is I go there a lot, but I was just basing it off of, you know, what I've seen before. Uh, even what my, like the floor plan of my sister's apartment when she lived there. Because it was, it was actually, my, the place my sister lived was a, uh, it was a semi-detached house but it was divided into four apartments and she had like the ground. So there was like, so imagine like this one, there's two houses, but instead of being divided into the two, you had apartment on the lower floor, apartment on the upper floor on, in both houses, which is, it was, it was a lot. But anyway, like I was, I was like, I was basing it off of that. I was basing it off of, you know, property ladder that I watched years ago. So I'm actually really, really happy that it turned out to be pretty accurate. Uh, and all, actually also, uh, this is really cool. A lot of people um, were like, oh my God, this house, like the, the, the other house we built, it was like reminding of them, uh, them of the TV show Outnumbered, uh, which is incredible because that's also what I was kind of basing the floor plan off of and some of the, the furniture placement. So I was pretty happy that some people picked up on that too. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but then again, uh, like a lot of people said, they're like, my house is exactly like this. It's because there's so many of the same floor plan homes uh, just because they built a lot of them during the, whatever, what period? I don't know. There's there's some history buffs out there, but I believe it was, wasn't it during like the wartime period where there's just like a lack of housing? Maybe it wasn't war. No, it can't have been wartime. It was some period where there was just a general lack of housing. I mean, it was after the war and then people moved back and there was just a lack of housing. So they had to build a lot of it quickly. So obviously it made sense to just use the same plan over and over again. It was something along those lines. I mean, I'm, don't don't take my word for it. That's not accurate, but someone will know in the comments down below or Google will also know. Anyway, so we've just done the dining. I've just been talking all over this, but uh, went for some dark slate flooring, which actually, uh, oh, actually, no, I won't spoil it because I've done a couple of, <laughs> I've done a couple of builds and I just recorded another one, which will be out next week, actually, but I was going to say something about it, but I don't want to spoil it yet. Anyway, yeah, so I've gone for this dark slate flooring uh, throughout the, the kitchen dining area. And I didn't want to go completely like black and white because I do that a lot. Uh, that's why we went for the more like timbered colored table and all that. And then we had the timber bar stools. So I had a bit of fun. Obviously, the, the kitchen itself is this very contemporary uh, white, gray, 
uh, black color scheme because I thought that was very fitting because that's what it's supposed to be. But then we sort of brought into the we brought the warmer tones into it with the exposed brick wall, the dining table, and the light above the table as well, just to, to sort of make it feel a little bit more homely on that side where you're going to be sitting down having dinner or whatever it may be. And then the living room as well, it's, it's again slightly less modern but still fairly contemporary because we've got those sort of modern light bluish couches and then just a lot of um, large furniture set pieces around the room. I think this room actually, I'm actually really, really happy with the, the furnishing on this house. Like I was looking back at the screenshots just before recording this commentary and I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm just really happy with the way this turned out. Cause I spent a lot of time doing this. Like this, this, uh, just fur furnishing, this took me like an hour and 40 minutes, which normally for a house build, I could, I could easily do a full house build in like an hour 40, like in under two hours is something that I could do. The fact that I spent this long furnishing and it turned out good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> like at least I didn't waste the time or anything. Like you can see here, yeah, I'm, I'm spending forever to choose like a lamp. It's like I wanted it to be the right one. And I do the same thing here as well, trying to choose a freaking painting. But um, you know, painstakingly going through it. I don't know how accurate this house is to to the the UK lifestyle. But again, like I said, I was just basing it off of what I've seen. It may not be accurate, but I do my best. And last time I seemed to succeed somehow. Uh, I guess actually the big uh, the big note. Uh, oh. I don't know if I, uh, cause I, yeah, actually one of the big bits of feedback from part one was like the fences, um, on the houses weren't tall enough. Like I was using a shorter fence, which is, is very similar to here in Australia. Like, uh, for our houses and that, like just like suburban houses, they will have a very high, like wooden fence or something, or maybe not wooden or whatever fence it may be, but it's very tall. Um, and I wasn't using a particular, a particularly tall fence on this. So I did go through and change that, which you, I don't know if that was in this video or not. I don't know if I recorded that, but it, it is a taller fence now. That was one of the big points of um, like uh, to note. And then the other big point was that these houses are like the, the ones I'm building here are a bit more spacious than they would be in real life. And that's absolutely true. But I kind of did that on purpose just because in Sims having really small space like if having a really small space in a house in sims is not that bad because it does work pretty well like in the sims 4 it works pretty well but i think because these are supposed to be family homes and they're like the other house i think could have up to seven sims in it wasn't it it was something great like a lot of sims in that space um and maybe maybe it was six or seven i was like i really didn't want the house to all like the scale of them to be that small because then trying to move that amount of sims through the space becomes really difficult in the sims so i thought it was just better to make them slightly bigger just for playability sake so that when you do have a family in there they don't just get stuck and like form single file trying to do things uh but yeah no i'm totally aware that they are definitely smaller than this i mean there of course there are some houses that are bigger um i suppose i also remember like these the houses that i'm building here actually were based off of uh, well, based off a lot of things, but um, I remember whenever I used to visit my sister, like there was a certain like the way because I'd walk from her place to like the tube station to get around London and all that. And there was like a certain place there. Uh, there, was, like, there was a section, it was on one of the streets. There was a section of a few houses that looked exactly like this, like the semi-detached homes. Super fancy as well. And you know, and you know why they were super fancy? Because out the front, they had freaking like Aston Martins and Land Rovers sitting out there. I'm like, Jesus, the fact that they have that and it's, and it's in London. I was like, God, they, that, that, those people, phew, one day, going to be them. I'm going to have a house in the middle of London. I'm going to have an Aston Martin sitting there. It's going to be sweet. No, I probably, I, I don't think I'd want to live in London. At least not in the, like, not in, like, I don't know. No, I wouldn't, know. I think it'd be fun to try living in the UK. Because I, I can't do that. Because I am actually a dual citizen of Australia and the United Kingdom. Little known fact about me. Um, oh, I mean, I've said it here and there, but not everyone knows that. Uh, cause it's always, it's always fun. Like when I, I comment on something about the UK and they're like, uh, and someone will bring up be, about being a citizen and I'm like, well, you know, I am a citizen too, right? <laughs> I have my say too. Uh, yeah, it's cause my parents are from the UK. So that's why, in case you're wondering, uh, and that's like, my sister lived over there and worked there for a while too, just cause, just cause she could. It's like, Hey, well, why, I mean, why not? It's a bit of fun anyway. Uh, back to this house. So I didn't want to mention this earlier, but upstairs, you may be beginning to notice it doesn't look as modern as the downstairs. It's going to be real old. It's like this family has poured all their money into the downstairs extension and renovation. That's where they put all, all their great British pounds. They put it all into that and upstairs it's still old, still drab. And it's just like not renovated at all and so I had, I had a lot of fun doing this actually i guess it's similar to that the other house but i guess the one next door 
I think, I think the way I thought of it is like this family, they're like, hey, let's put all of our money into the downstairs, into the living space. The guys next door, they're probably like, hey, let's, you know, let's make over the entire lot. So we'll make the downstairs look nice, but not super expensive, you know. And then upstairs, we can also redecorate a little bit, make it look nice and clean. Then this one, they're like, no, okay, we've run out of money up the top. So we're going to have to leave it exactly as it was. Again, this was something that I kind of pulled from like all the property shows that I used to watch. It's like they would, um, they would always, you can only ever do so much, especially with like selling houses, Um, even selling houses in Australia, because whenever they're trying to, because they, they go in, they go in to the people that are trying to sell their home. They, 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 they haven't got the sale. Like they're trying to sell their home for whatever reason. Maybe it's been a few years. No one's bought it. So the show comes in. They're like, okay, uh, they figure out what budget they have, what needs to be fixed and what they can fix. And they, they do what they can as best as they can. And then there's like some rooms that are just left untouched because it's like, well, we can't do it all. Um, and that's kind, of, that's kind of what I imagine here is with this is like, hey, we've got this much budget. We can't do everything. But let's make the downstairs really good. So that's going to sell the house. Then whoever moves here could just do, you know, like to be fair, like upstairs, really all it is is if you just did it, give it a good give it a good paint job or take up the wallpaper, get some new furniture, it'll be fine. You don't need to change the walls or anything like that. So, you know, it's a bit of a makeover, but I, I did have fun just making this place look old up the top. <laughs> like just using all these fun like wallpapers because wallpapers, oh man, are they everywhere in the UK? Jesus. Like every house, unless it's been like renovated or it's a new build or something, it's just wallpaper city, just everywhere. <laughs> At least in my experience, anyway. Uh, yeah, because we, oh man, actually I remember when uh, this is a few years back when we were we were sort of making over like my parents' place uh, here in Sydney. Uh, like they li- they lived in the same home my whole life, so that was my childhood home. They still live there now. Anyway, we we're making over that, changing one of the rooms, and one of the rooms still had wallpaper in it, and we had to take it off and. Oh man! And if you've ever taken off wallpaper, if you've t- tried to take it down, it sucks. It takes so long. It's so tedious as well. It's like not fun. like some some bits of it come off really easily, but then you spend you can spend so long and just trying to get a little bit off. Oh man, that sucked. That's and just imagining like the houses. Like I just, I'm only thinking about it now because this house has wallpaper all over the upstairs. It's like imagine just trying to take all that off. Oh. I had forgotten I'd done that, and that's brought back those horrible, horrible memories of it. Um, <laughs> anyway, so this this house actually has two double bedrooms, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, you can actually fit quite a lot of Sims in this. Actually, I think that the, the Sim count will be about the same because the other house has two single beds. This one has two double beds. Um, so I think it's I think it's actually seven Sims in each house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, two, four. Oh, maybe six, sorry, six Sims in each house. Is that right? Because we have the double bed, the toddler room in the other house I'm thinking of, the twin beds, and I don't know. Like, there's there's a lot of it. Like, look, a lot of Sims can live in this house. And you could even join the houses together if you wanted or just pick one and live in it, lock the other one or something. I don't know. Let me know what you do with this house. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, though, I probably should have said this at the beginning. Go watch part one because uh, it <laughs> it's got all the building in it. This is just purely furnishing, if you hadn't noticed. Anyway, we're out into the office now, as you can quite plainly tell. Uh, just I wasn't because I, I was, I was going to furnish this first, but I couldn't really figure out how I wanted it to look. But I was like... I was like, okay, it's not really, it's like one of those, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but you can actually buy prefab uh, little offices that you can place in your garden, like a studio kind of thing. You can actually just buy them completely made. So I was like, okay, this doesn't have to match the house in terms of aesthetic, in terms of like flooring and wallpaper, because it could just come as a as a pre-bought thing. So I was like, okay, because that, that's why I didn't originally build it first, because I was like, I don't know what the rest of the house is going to look like, but I was like, okay. It doesn't need to look like the rest of the house because it probably wouldn't anyway. Uh, but like, I still kept it contemporary, obviously. And then we got a few like little uh, planters there so you could do some gardening, grow your own herbs and veggies. I don't know why I said herbs like that. I'm not American. It's herbs with an H. Uh, and then just doing like a little, little alleyway down the side here with some hedges. I was going to do mo- a little bit more down the side, but then I was like, okay, we probably don't need to cover the whole side of the house with shrubbery and all that but here we go the screenshots so we've already seen the outside so we're not going to do too much of that but we're going to show there's the new shed the new back garden there looking good looking good and the kitchen dining area i really like this area i think i, I think especially the dining i really like the dining table and the chairs like with the green accent to go with like the, all the plants and all that like i really try to keep that side of the kitchen warm and like i don't know it just seems ah, i just really like it like this is the kind of renovation i would do 
And this also totally reminds me of like a property ladder kind of renovation where they just make it super contemporary. Entrance area there. I really, man, I really like the downstairs of this. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I, I do. And there's the living room. Pretty spacious, pretty good. Two three seaters and a two seater. A lot of lot of entertaining space. I like the little shoes under the stairs there as well. I had a bit of fun with those. Uh, oh, the upstairs. Look at this place, man. It is. It is old and it's cramped. Well, I mean, that room was. This one's not as cramped, but still, look at this. <laughs> look at the decor. It's so dated. Jesus. Uh, just, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I had fun with it. I had a lot of fun with it. I love this room, though. Look at that. It's so pink. So many toys in it as well. That's awesome. But yeah, of course, you can download this on the gallery, as I mentioned right at the beginning. Uh, you can click the link in the description down below to download it, or you can search for my username, which is the Sim Supply. Uh, and you can find it there. But the, here is a floor plan shot. If you want to see the part one of this build, which we build the other house in and the exterior, you can click on screen right about now. It should be on the end of the screen right here. You can watch part one or you can watch some other build videos from the playlist or you can subscribe or you can visit my website, all that kind of good stuff. Make sure to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback down below. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time and have an awesome day.